Hey, what's going on guys? Crash here. Today on Forgotten Library, we are going to cover a game called Sunless Sea. Sunless Sea was started as a Kickstarter campaign by developer Fail Better Games in 2013 with a goal of 60,000 pounds. In 2015, they had raised over 100,000 pounds and the game was launched on Steam in the same year. This was Fail Better Games' first PC launch with its four previous titles all being released on browser and mobile only. The reception of Sunless Sea is varied. Metacritic rating ranged from 73 on Nintendo Switch to 89 on iOS, with 79 average across all platforms. Publication reviews ranged from 6 out of 10 by GameSpot to 10 out of 10 from Eurogamer, with most publications giving it roughly an 8. The consensus from these reviews tends to be the game was very well done in terms of story and world building, with its largest criticism being, as GameSpot put it, a glacial pace that prevents you from ever completing the game. Sunless Sea sold 100,000 copies in its first year and 350,000 by 2018. No further sales data was available on public sources as far as I could find. But enough of the historical figures, let's actually get into this game I've never played before and see for ourselves. When you launch the game, it starts with a quote and on the bottom explains to you that you're probably gonna die. And oh boy, was this game right, but of course we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves. Let's head to the main menu. We checked the options first, checked our key bindings to get a handle of the controls, so far so good, checked our video settings, bootyful. And then we decided to start the game. It was a past as a backstory for your captain. The natural philosopher seemed like it'd be a really good fit for exploring. We told the crew to call us captain, then we named ourselves. Went over to the admiral's office, got ourselves a job. Looked over the job real quick, said we need to speak to a manager. That's when they told us to f*** off, and we decided to get on our way. I got lost, so I pulled up my map, realized there's nothing on it, so we just had to kind of go around and get lost. This is where we got into our first fight, which we won, by the way, thank you. Pulled up and looted him real quick, see what he had, and he didn't really have much. We got some repairs done before we started heading north on our way to the next spot. We got into our second fight, which was way harder than our first one, because this guy had other shit. But we won anyway, so f*** him. But it was definitely beyond time to return to our home port of London. That it was time to recruit a new officer. We went with the Cauldry Heir, who turned out to be a really good surgeon, with some interesting backstory later in the game. Topped off on our supplies, sold our book, because we totally weren't going to need that again. Picked up a passenger, and got eaten by BDSM Shark halfway to our destination. One thing that needs to be mentioned is this game is designed for you to die and restart again with a new captain. So you get the Warren of Redemption, which is where you try to figure out what you're going to do with your new captain. When you die, you'll be able to pick a relationship between your new captain and your last captain, which is what's going to determine what you get to keep and what ends up getting thrown away as you restart. I decided to go with correspondent at the end because that would allow me to retain 50% of the pages, which is what you need to solve certain puzzles, as well as their chart because I didn't want to have to map everything again. And with that, we were right back where we were before. We had to choose a past all over again and everything, and the quests all reset as well. We were doing everything all over again and to be honest this was a bit of a turnoff for me it took hours to get to where i was and to have to start everything over including all the quests we already did puts more pressure on the player than what i think is fair but we'll cover more when we get to the rating despite how short that clip was of the playthrough footage that was taken from about four hours of gameplay the reality is GameSpot was correct about the quote-unquote glacial pace. Outside of finding new ports in the occasional battle, most of the game really is just wandering around aimlessly. And if you die, you lose all progress, save for what you can pick back up with the Warrant of Redemption. That said, if you can read and enjoy a robust world and story, this game is very addictive. Something about the constant risk of losing everything over just a minor mistake, constantly wondering if you have enough supplies to get to where you need to be, and not knowing what the unknown is gonna have in store for you, speaks to me in ways that no other survival game has in years. In terms of world building, lore, and being able to immerse yourself in this experience, it exceeded every expectation I had, especially being an indie game. I've gotta get it a K rating, four out of five, Damn good, still flawed, definitely criticisms that can be made about the game, but it is an excellent way to kill a few hours if you've got the time to kill. With that, thank you guys again for yet another awesome episode of Forgotten Libraries, games we've never played. 
I'm Crash Landicute. If you liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe, like it says back there on the board. If you didn't like the video, leave a comment and tell me why. Don't just say it sucks. Like, actually tell me how I can improve. It would be very helpful. I'm still new to this as well. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you with the next episode, and I'll see you then.